a better tool for this is the Fourier series. The Fourier series acts very much like the Taylor series, but is an infinite sum of sines and cosines. Each order, n, of the series is made up of sine nx plus cosine nx. Each sine and cosine is multiplied by its own coefficient, again controlling how much that term affects the overall function. n, these inner multiplier values, control the frequency of each wave function. The higher the frequency, the more hills the curve has. By combining weighted waves of different frequencies, we can approximate a function within the range of 2 pi, one full period. Again, if we know the function, we can compute the weights, and even if we don't, we could use something called the discrete Fourier transform, which is really cool, but we're not dealing with it in this video. I hope you see where I'm going with this. Let's just jump ahead and do what we did before. Compute a bunch of terms of the Fourier series and feed them to a multi-layer network as additional inputs, Fourier features. Note that we have twice as many Fourier features as Taylor features, since we have a sine and cosine. Let's try it on this dataset. Now this works pretty well. It's a little wavy, but not too shabby. Note that for this to work, we need to normalize our inputs between negative pi and positive pi, one full period. Let's try this on an image. Now it looks strange at first, almost like static coming into focus, but it works, and it works really well. If we compare it to networks of the same size, trained for the same amount of time, we can see the Fourier network learns much better and faster than the network without Fourier features or the one with Taylor features. Just look at the level of detail in those curly locks. You can hardly tell the difference from the real image. Now, I've glossed over a very important detail. The example Fourier series I gave had one input. This function has two inputs. To handle this properly, we have to use the two-dimensional Fourier series, one that takes an input of x and y. What do we do with that extra y? Here are the terms for the 2D Fourier series up to two orders. We are now multiplying the x and y terms together, and end up with sine x, cosine y, sine x, sine y, cosine x, cosine y, and cosine x, sine y. Every combination of sine and cosine and y and x. Not only that, we also have every combination of frequencies, that inner multiplier. So sine 2x times cosine 1y, and so on and so forth. Here's up to three orders. Now four. That is a lot of terms. We have to calculate this many terms per order, and this number grows very quickly as we increase the order, much faster than it would for the 1D series. And this is just for a baby 2D input. For a 3D, 4D, 5D input, forget it. The number of computations needed for higher dimensional Fourier series explodes as we increase the dimensionality of our inputs. We have encountered the curse of dimensionality. Lots of methods of function approximation and machine learning break down as dimensionality grows. These methods might work well on low dimensional problems, but they become computationally impractical or impossible for higher dimensional problems.